Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Flyback Chronograph. You can see this full bracelet born diving chronograph from Blancpain on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full listing for this timepiece with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images and naturally complete pricing details for this Blancpain flyback chronograph. Now on my wrist, 6 and 3rd inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, you'll immediately note two features of this watch. First, it's the 45 millimeter case that we've known since 2007. This watch is the 5085 reference, so with chronograph. And the second feature you'll note is the presence of Blancpain's legendary X71 bracelet, which changes both the look of the watch on the wrist compared to the strap and the feel of the watch on the wrist compared to the strap. Let's attack the basics first. 45 millimeters is the distance across the round of the case. So when I speak of that, I mean 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock from the outer case, not including crown guards, chronograph pushers, or crown. In terms of thickness, the watch is fairly chunky. 15.5 millimeters, it wears a little bit thicker than that because you can see that the bezel cantilevers out. It, it overhangs the flank of the case. So a very tight sleeve or dress cuff could get hung up on the watch. You should be okay for a sport jacket, blazer, or a thick sweater. Now, the watch has a lug-to-lug -lug measure measurement that is quite reasonable. I'm going to say at 50.5 millimeters, it's one of the most compact lug to lug measurements of any conventional round watch in the 45 millimeter range. But because of the solid end links of the X71, it does project out considerably broader across the wrist. The extremity to extremity measurement from horn to horn across the bracelet is actually 56 millimeters. So it wears quite large on the bracelet. I would even say it wears one or two sizes up compared to its strap borne brethren. Now the watch features a very substantial X71 bracelet. This thing is a legend in its own right, like the 50 Fathoms, albeit a latter day legend from the 2000s. The X71 is built as well as anything from the likes of Audemars Piguet or Patek Philippe. You'll note the intermediate links perfectly interlocking with the primary links. The beauty of the alternately brushed and polished segments. You can see how marginal the clearance between the bracelet links is, and yet completely flexible and silken on the wrist. On the underside, it's exactly the opposite. There are broad channels between the individual links, so it'll never pinch skin or pull hair. Now, this clever interlocking design means that you can barely even see daylight through the bracelet. So tightly assembled is it, and yet it has exquisite flexibility. It feels as good as it looks. Like Richard Mille, you see there's a leaf spring built into the double deployant clasp, beautifully skeletonized. You can see the sort of filigree style with the Blancpain logos, or founders logos, I should say, in each individual swing arm. And again, because of that leaf spring built into the clasp body, it snaps itself shut with alacrity and a clamshell snaps down to secure the entirety of it. Much lower in profile than the bracelets found on many other diving watches. It is as elegant as you would expect from Blancpain and built just as well. Now, of course, since 2007, we've gotten used to the idea of the 45 millimeter case with its expansive cambered sapphire crystal flanking the center crystal on the bezel. One of the advantages here is that the entire bezel can be luminescent with a nearly scratch resistant I would almost say almost scratch proof. It is scratch resistant. Sapphire crystal atop the bezel, you can have super luminova painted on the bezel base. Scratches will never get through to it. A big difference from ceramic or conventional anodized aluminum bezels, but moreover, it recreates the look of the old plexiglass or acrylic bezels on the vintage Blancpain 50 Fathoms, while giving the watch an upscale and unique look among modern dive watches, as well as that legendary scratch resistance. Now the center dial features all applied white gold hour indices and Arabic numeral 12, white gold broadsword style hands, and matching white gold broadsword style hands for the sub-registers. Everything is fully loomed down to the sub-register hands so you can see all of it at night. The dial has an inner dial that's separated by a crease line. There's a strong character line running about the inner dial that would otherwise bisect the sub-registers, and it separates the hour track from the flat plane of the inner dial. The dial of the watch is a muted metallic. It's not quite gloss, and it's not a sunburst. It's more of a matte metallic in black and very handsome, also very easy to read. 
Robust pushers look like screw downs. In fact, they are not. They have full functionality without being screwed in or out. You still don't want to use them underwater, but they have a beautiful congruence to them in as much as they have the large flanking shoulder surround of a screw down that makes them a better visual match for the massive crown guards and winding and setting crown. Now the watch features what Blompon calls its F-185 caliber. F-185 is a Frédéric Piguet 1185 flyback. So essentially if you know the fine column wheel vertical clutch automatic winding Frédéric Piguet chronograph family. This watch features that. 40 hour power reserve, a 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate. You'll note the case back, advertising, anti-magnetism. Perhaps I could show that to better effect in the light. And indeed it does have anti-magnetic qualities as the interior of the watch features an encircling soft iron cage for the movement to protect it from strong magnetic flux densities. And of course the Piguet is very thin, very fine, a true high horology chronograph movement. It was the first modern chronograph movement created post quartz crisis during the mid-1980s. With the column wheel its function selection is crisp and with the vertical clutch You'll note that the chronograph seconds hand starts without jump, stops without stagger, always resets precisely to the index at 12, and if you want to just run the chronograph continuously, there is no hazard to the movement. The vertical clutch creates no essential wear or tear. You will run down your power reserve a little more quickly, but wearing this watch on a daily basis, it'll never run down. And of course, you have flyback functionality to reset and restart the chronograph with a single push of the trigger at 4 o'clock. Finally, the watch has 300 meter water resistance, so while it's a little bit more advanced in terms of movement architecture and capability than the standard 50 Fathoms 5015 reference, this one gives up nothing in capability. You can see and you can purchase this Blancpain 50 Fathoms flyback chronograph on our website.